Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I wanted to touch on something that I think has been a big success for Battlefield 2042 over the past few weeks. It's kept me entertained over the holiday season, and I've been enjoying it a whole lot more than I imagined. And that is the Nordvik mid-season event. Before we begin, as always, don't forget to subscribe if you do enjoy the content. We're coming up on 39k, not so far away from the big 4-0, so your support would be very much appreciated. So yesterday, the third and final week became active, introducing Breakthrough Chaos, basically just Breakthrough on Spearhead, but with 128 players. So in terms of the three weeks, this one has actually changed the least, really, and is the most unoriginal, I suppose. This game mode was actually always initially available when Battlefield 2042 released, but most players found it a bit too crazy, indeed chaotic as the name would suggest, and DICE changed Breakthrough to be 64 players as default. Now this is definitely a bit of a polarizing game mode, I see a lot of people who hate it, a lot of people who want it reinstated as a permanent mode, 128 player Breakthrough Chaos is a bit of a double-edged sword in my eyes. On the one hand, you've got just tons of enemies, all of them encroaching on these two objectives. So if you throw a nade in there, boom, you're gonna get a bunch of kills. You've got much more of an opportunity to mow down several enemies with one magazine. You've got just so many targets to snipe at, which is what I found the most enjoyable, actually, even though I don't really do a lot of sniping in Battlefield in general, and it's just, a lot of silly fun. But then on the other hand, it's just so insane and spammy that it's difficult to be tactical and feel like you're making a meaningful contribution to your team, right? You're trying to get a flank off and you get sniped from across the map or a transport heli flies overhead and destroys you or there's like three guys counter flanking you. And sometimes it just feels kind of impossible to do anything. Uh, yeah, sure, all those things can happen in 64 player 2, but it feels extremely exaggerated in 128 player breakthrough. So for me, I do enjoy the mode, but I think it's something that's cool to have as a mid-season event or like a weekly portal type of thing. Of course, I was a little bit bummed that we didn't get the new thermal scopes and the night vision scopes in a night version of Spearhead that we saw teased, or it seemed to be teased, in some of the original artwork. Um, as I covered in my last video, because that would have been like way cooler than what we actually got, but you know, overall I wasn't dissatisfied. The other two modes I actually thought were really good as well. Last week we had Retribution, where the attacking side had to capture one flag at a time, kind of like in front lines, and that was only 16v16, so on the flip side there, that game mode felt super tactical for me. If I found myself with a good squaddy who I could work together with, a lot of the time it felt like we were single-handedly taking down flags, so pretty much the opposite of this week's mode. And then of course it culminated in several MCOMs that had to be destroyed inside one of the cube buildings, which was honestly a really nice finale. Battlefield games in general do lack any kind of end game moment, unless it's really close on the tickets. So having those MCOMs be the final objective brought a bit of a spectacle to the table. I did feel like it was perhaps unnecessary for the defending team to have a transport helicopter. In my eyes, they are just way too tanky and need too much sustained fire for a team of 16 to take down. It can be done, but it's very difficult if your teammates don't join in on the action. And then the attackers had an attack helicopter. I actually kind of like this. It reminded me more of how past Battlefield games worked. You know, you would have a set selection of vehicles on a map and mode basis. And in this situation, leaving out the Nightbird and the Stealth Heli left the attack helicopter front and center, which is actually nice to see for a change. I did feel this mode was a bit one-sided, however. I don't know how you guys got on, but I always found the attacking team would win most of the time. I think it's partly the momentum because there's only one objective. So if you take it and then just rush over to the next one, the defenders don't get much of an opportunity to fall back themselves and defend. But overall, I really enjoyed this mode as well. And then on week one, we had the conquest assault mode. Again, an interesting twist on conquest where the defending team beginning with all the flags capped 
and the attackers are trying to cap every single one of those to put the defenders out of action as soon as possible. So I had vastly different matches in this game mode. Sometimes we'd be constantly fighting over flags and capping each other's home flag until the tickets wore down, sort of like in a traditional conquest match, but other times we would just steamroll the defenders real fast, all cap them, and the game would be over within a matter of minutes. Now, rewards-wise, I guess they were okay-ish. Full disclosure here, I really couldn't care less about skins and cosmetics in Battlefield 2042, so I was mainly playing for fun, but I did find it odd that most of the cooler looking skins came in week two, and now this week, the final week, where one might expect the biggest rewards, we get a blue default angel skin, that's just a recolor, a math skin, and an MCS 880 skin that nobody uses. I don't know, it just seems a little bit minimum effort to me. Now that being said though, I did have a blast with this event and compared to the season two mid-season event, which was basically 8v8 conquest, and then on the second week, 16v16 conquest on old maps that haven't yet been reworked like Breakaway, this was much, much better than that event. Something a little different, a little bit quirky, some of it tactical, some of it less so, but overall I had a really good time and I just wanted to put that out there. I guess this is like my little mini review of the Nordvik event. Let me know how you got on with the event below guys. Tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like. And if you missed my last video, feel free to check that out too. That one is all about new attachments that could be coming to Battlefield 2042 soon. So if you're interested in that, then feel free by all means. Thank you for your time today and I will see you guys in the next video.